think that I should be like playing like the Rocky theme song or something as soon as we do this. We could like come on out and and you know be 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 punching and warming up and sparring and stuff like that. But oh my God, we are live! Hey guys, what is up? What is going on? Welcome to Caliber Corner, episode number one hundred and twenty-four. Tonight we're going to talk about the uh, carry concealed life, as I like to call, it, because it is a bit of a lifestyle change when you decide to start concealed carrying. And we're also going to focus on the uh, twenty-two Hornet. Uh, a very interesting center fire round. And then uh, anything else that pops up along the line, we will go ahead and uh, discuss that for this evening. It is 6 o'clock Central Time. It is Monday night, and I'm sure we'll have a lot more people joining in as we get started. Uh, real quick, tonight's episode is brought to you courtesy of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Guys, SS Pond is right off the uh, Interstate 80 exit going north into Lexington, Nebraska. Stop in there, say hello to Stan, and SS Pond will take care of your firearms needs. And uh, contact information for SS Pond is in the bottom of this video. So real quick, let's go ahead and let the panel introduce themselves, and we'll just get right into it, get into the discussions. Give a little shout out to people that are watching this evening and go from there. On my left, we got the Kingpin. Kingpin, what's going on, man? How's it going? Not too much, man. Thanks for having me. Keep I appreciate going it. In the house. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see. Kingpin, do you want to promote your channel at all, or are you good to go? Uh, I'm good to go, but if uh, I'll drop a link. Go check yeah. out the Crazy Scotsman's channel yes. and uh, join the Mr. Holster giveaway. All kinds of really cool stuff. There's a only thing I can remember right off the top of my head is a Dillon press. So if you're interested in getting into reloading or you need some new equipment, there's a Dillon press plus gobs and gobs of extra stuff people have thrown in. Cool, cool. And if you don't right. want if you don't want free stuff, then just uh, help donate some money to Mr. Holster's wife. Yeah, in case you guys don't know, check out the Mr. Holster channel if you haven't subscribed yet. It's over on YouTube. He was, I've been watching him for a couple of years now and really a big fan of, of the Ruger firearms, but also just a lot of contributions to the gun community. He makes some great videos and uh, somebody who's inspired me and uh, he's not with us anymore. And, uh, you know, leave behind a legacy, uh, a wife, a family, and there's going to be some great giveaways over on uh, Crazy Scotsman's channel. Make sure you check it out. And if you want, you can still contribute to help out the family. So. Good to know, man. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Up on my top right over here, we got Calaveras 32 Special. Calaveras, what's going on, brother? Oh, just, you know, glad to be able to, uh, you know, make the show today. You know, I uh, usually listen in, you know, from work, but today I had off. So, uh, nice. Yeah, after working three weeks between at 60 to 70 hours each, I decided to take a long weekend. Yeah, yeah, Calaveras, yeah, I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday. Yeah, and Sunday, too. Thanks. Yeah, you know, Saturday, 12-hour day, Sunday, 10-hour yeah. day. Yeah. A little I lumber know. impersonation. Yeah. Mm. Hey, I've do you want to plug your channel? Is there anything you want to say about your channel? Anything we should know? or? Uh, that's for, you know, just been uh, releasing videos as I can. Uh, Got to do some editing this weekend, so I have something to release this next week. Mm. You know, if you, you know, uh, Want to go over and check it out? It's usually a lot of gear reviews. You know, most of it is on the lower end of the price scale, but I try yeah. to find stuff that's a decent price. You know, a decent value for the money. Other than I don't really do any live shows, but you know, you can check out on Tuesday nights. You know, uh, we have the Get Off My Lawn podcast. You know, mm -hmm. with Sandhill Shooter. Right on. Uh, as well as you know, a Night Strike. You know, also on the panel does his own shows. You know. Uh, you know, the uh, Rants and Raves on Wednesdays with him and Roll Call. And, you know, uh, occasionally you'll, you'll get the Friday Night Strike. But, you know, I don't really Heck have yeah. anyone, so I'll plug those guys. Right on, man. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank All you. right. And uh, off to his left is Sand Hill Shooter. Sandy, what's going on? My brother from northeastern Nebraska. <laughs> How we doing, man? Hey, what's up? Thanks for letting me come hang out tonight. I uh, got off work a little bit earlier than... Well, it's it's my early week, so I'm off work early, and I got to join you, so it's good to be here. Hey. Um, you can check me out on YouTube. You can check me out on Facebook. Same name, Sand Hills Shooter. Every Tuesday night at 9 o'clock Central Time, we all hang out and, and talk about whatever topic that I have decided we're going to talk about. Tomorrow night is uh, socialism and, and universal health care and free college tuition oh. and, and student, student loan debt forgiveness and all that fun stuff and and how uh sandhills thinks that that's a terrible idea so if everybody thinks it's a terrible idea you can come and chime in and, and agree and if you think they're great ideas then you should also show up and uh support your own argument for that too so should be fun times 
Oh, definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And uh, I'm, what I'm scared about is the kids because they're the ones who are getting these false promises thinking, oh, it's going to be free. It's going to be free. E no, 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 it's never. There's no, we need to have a little discussion on the basics of economics and taxes. But uh, anyway, should be a good discussion. So thanks for being here, man. I appreciate it. As somebody who concealed carries, I'm sure you can contribute to the topic too, which is always a good thing. So all right. And last but not least, joining us, we've got a little night strike going on. Night strike, how's it going, man? How you doing today? I'm doing okay, I guess. I don't know. Doing okay? You know. Just, you got any uh, any plugs you want to get in there? We got we got Tuesday night hit or miss, nine yeah, o'clock uh, Eastern time, eight o'clock central time, right? Yeah, we got hit or miss on the night strike one channel on YouTube. Uh we've got uh I mean we have rants and rays on Brokaw's channel or my channel, it depends on what happens. And sometimes when is when is Rancer Raves? Wednesday Rants and Raves. Wednesday night, sometime in the evening, anywhere between nine or eleven. Nine ish central ten. Yeah, you just watch. Where I usually see it around. Usually it's like nine thirty. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's later. We don't have a set time. It's just roll call slow. We'll just put it that way. Okay. Uh, Anything you want to share about GunTube.org, man? Should people be checking that out? Yes, please go to guntube.org, sign up, create an account, uh, have fun with it. And if, if you are so inclined, please do me the favor of, if you have to buy anything from any of the stores that are on the ads on guntube.org, please click on those links and buy from that way. Otherwise, I don't think guntube's going to make it. Right now, we're, we're, pretty, we're hurting pretty bad. Check out guntube's Patreon as well. And, and you know... You know, it, help us out that way too, if you want. I want to explain something, to everybody. I provided a contact list to Night Strike with with all these different companies that are involved in the firearms industry. He reached out to every single one of them, and not one of them replied back saying that they would like to advertise on GunTube.org or even put an affiliate link or banner or anything like that. So, if you have anybody that is involved in the firearms industry, two A, anything along those lines, guys, get a hold of Night Strike, have them contact Night Strike, and maybe set up some sort of a deal. Because we spend a lot of money, man. We buy a lot of ammunition, we buy a lot of firearms, we buy a lot of accessories, and uh, you know, it's one of those little ways that the industry can maybe give back to the grassroots effort that uh, Night Strike is putting together with uh, GunTube.org. And again, you know, every time that we got those uh, updates from YouTube, we lose more and more of our ability to share our message and get ourselves out there and our visibility. I mean, so just keep that in mind. You know, GunTube.org doesn't limit us. Yo, Travis, give Stan my number because I, yeah. ask, ask Stan if he if he could help out just even just a little bit. Hell, you know, I, I am desperate at this point. Okay, I'll be honest. GunTube is not doing well. I'm, it's doing as well as, as I can hope to keep it up right now. But I'll be honest, guys. It's not easy to do to run this kind of platform. It is not. And it's taking its toll. Well, and if you want to have better access and more ability to upload as a content creator, there's a, there's just a simple subscription you can buy into, and it gets you a lot more access, a lot more space than what you're going to get just on a free account. So keep that in mind. Um you know, so that's one of those things that you need to take into consideration. But I mean, we're going up against YouTube, we're going up against Gunstream, or we're going up against I, I, Full I, I Thirty. You know, I don't have the sponsorship or the advertisement that Gunstreamer, YouTube, or any other provider does. I don't yeah. have that, and because I don't have that, everything is coming out of my pocket. All right. So. Okay, man. Uh, and joining us here at the last second, we got a little squib load in the house. Squibby, what's cracking, man? How's it going? If you ever one of those days at work where you just want to start whistling as you're walking towards the door and just let everything fall apart behind you and just get into your truck and drive away and as the explosions are going on and everything else, you're not even looking in the rear view uh, mirror. I, you know. I got to say no because that would involve um, children. So, no, I got to say no on that one. But uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I've, I've had rough whoa, days. They're not I've your rough kids. days. They're not it's, your kids. I mean, they no are. Squibs. They are squib. They really are. When you think about it, they are. I squib. Are you getting like Vietnam flashbacks or something? I'm not that old. <laughs> I was gonna say but, we're about this explosions, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, if it's not Vietnam, what? What is it? Kosovo? Somalia. Don't you pay yeah, attention just, when he talks? Just, just one of those days, man. Just one of those days. Mogadishu. Ah. Uh, 
All right. All right. So, hey, uh, real quick, let's go ahead and see who's uh, joining us over on the YouTube side. So what's going on? We got a little Yoder, Texas out there. We got some 10X shooters, some E-Honda going on. Southpaw's out there, too. Midnight Range, Ron Kell's out there. Uh, let's see, Mystic Guns is rocking it. Kingpin's out there and over here. Tacos and French Fries, Two Gun, Kitty the Catnip, Outlaw's with us. Let's see. Second Amendment wasn't a suggestion. It says, hello. Hello, sir. And let's see here. Southpaw. I think I mentioned that. Andrew Faulkner's out there, too. Jason Stewart's joining us this evening. Black Cat Outdoors is there. Guy That Comments is joining us. Mystic Guns. John Z. Uh, did we miss anybody? I'm sure a lot more people will be joining in as we uh, as we get started here. Brian Mulligan's out there also. Hello, Brian. Welcome to the house. DM Foss is out there. M. Gabriel's out there. It says, Sapping. Is what Vermonters say in spring. Sapping. Ah, okay, okay, good to know, good to know. Billy the cab driver's out there. Hello, Billy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and just go right into it. So for the last couple weeks, uh, what uh, what we've been talking about here is uh, concealed carry firearms, concealed carry holsters. The one thing we really haven't talked about yet is the kind of a concealed carry mindset, um, mistakes that people make, advice that we can give you. Because when you legally carry a firearm, okay, uh, there's a lot of responsibility that comes along with it. And there's a lot of, of, of personal change that I've gone through over the last five plus years as a concealed carrier. And, and not everybody in the panel may conceal carry, but we see a lot of mistakes that people make. We see a lot of things on, you know, on, in YouTube videos, a lot of discussions that we have. And I think I've got some great pointers that people can think about. If, if you're thinking about going into carrying, there's some things that you really need to know. Maybe you're working on getting your carry permit. A lot of people are doing that. Maybe your state's gone constitutional carry, and now you get to carry, or maybe they don't require anything except that you carry. Now, it can be just as simple as keeping your head straight and carrying your concealed firearm, following whatever the law says you can follow, and and leave it at that. But there's a lot of things you got to think about. And I guess where this came from is I was just – I was having one of those days where I was driving home and I had somebody just rolling right up on me, tailgating me. And uh, it's a very slow school zone where I was at. And I was driving home. Person was freaking out. They were honking at me. They were flashing their lights. And, and I don't speed in a school zone because in Nebraska, it's usually double the fine and double the points off your license if you get a ticket. Uh, Sandhills, you can correct me on that. But I think school zones, they usually nail you. And I was getting upset. I'm like, look, man. I was going a couple miles over the speed limit, you know, and I was getting kind of a frustrated. I thought to myself, you know, I got to be very careful because if I was carrying or were I carrying, and if I was carrying and I get out of my car, or I stop or do something. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna reflect back on me and having that firearm. It's, it's an incredible responsibility, right? So the first thing I want to get into is kind of the, the attitude that you need to maintain if you're going to carry concealed, we call this the, uh, what the carry concealed life, I think, is what we're calling this episode because it is basically a lifestyle adjustment in your clothing, the way you carry yourself, where you can go, how you can get there, the rules and laws you have to follow, the liability associated with it. And I don't want to scare anybody out of carrying concealed, but when you do, there's really a lot of things you got to take into consideration because to me, it's not just as simple as, oh, I can carry today, put my gun in and go. All right. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to talk about was basically attitude. If you are the kind of person that's hot-headed, if you get physical when you get upset, um, if you're the kind of person that might be quick to throw a punch, if you're somebody who uh, mouths off to other people when you speak your mind, you know, there's a time and a place for that. But should it happen when you're carrying concealed? In my opinion, you need to check your attitude at the door. You need to be mature, a gentleman or lady, professional, when you're carrying, okay, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I think that attitude is very, very important, mainly because of the responsibility of having that firearm on you and irrational decisions that a person can make on a whim. Uh, guys, what do you think about that on the panel? What, what do you, how do you feel about attitude when it comes to concealed carry? Any thoughts on that at all? Well, it's got to be, it's got to be your number one thing that you're thinking about because. Whether, whether you want to admit it or not, a gun is designed to end life. And when you got a gun in your hand and you pointed it at something that's got a heartbeat and blood throw, flowing through it, when you pull that trigger, it's a very, very good chance that that heartbeat's going to stop and that blood's going to stop flowing. 
and you're going to have to deal with that for the rest of your life, and you better have been justified when you did it. Okay. Anybody else want to try that? Yeah. By yeah. and large, mo most concealed carriers um, don't carry because they want to get into a fight. They, they carry because they want to end one as quickly as possible if they're not given any other option. So... I think most concealed carriers, the ones, all the ones I've talked to have, have kind of felt the same way that if they, if they are carrying, they're less likely to get into an altercation yeah. because it, it's kind of like, um, you know, if, if you're a, if you're a fourth degree black belt, then you're not out looking for a fight. You're going to do everything that, that you can do to not get into a fight. And even if people call you names and insult your manhood, you know, you know that you you can tear them apart, um, and it's it's usually enough to know that you could. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. When I'm carrying, I don't have to prove anything to anybody, and so you know, I don't really care what people say. I try not to ever get into situations where I'd have to throw fists. That's just my nature, anyway. But if I'm carrying, then that just exacerbates everything. Um, you know, we've all heard stories of people that have uh, have been in a bar fight or what have you, or been in a fist fight or about to be in one, and then you know somebody finds out that that one person has a concealed carry permit and was carrying, and the other person's always like, "Man, if I knew you had a gun, I would have never started anything." Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, more people need to have that mindset, and, and more people need to be in a an environment where you don't start anything because you don't know who's carrying a gun. So let's just all mind our own business, not get in each other's faces and have a good time tonight. Um, these ways that's, that's how I feel. And, and most everybody that I've ever talked to is the same way. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. that's another reason for me that I prefer open carry. I don't have to worry about the whole man. If I had known you're a gun, I, if you had a gun, I wouldn't have messed with you. They see it right off the bat and they just leave me alone. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not opposed to open carry at all. I mean, I you know, you open carry you, I, and I've open carry before making some quick trips trips to Walmart before I go out to the range or just around. Um, I generally just tend to conceal, but yeah, I mean, you make a pretty good point too. Well, there there are times yeah. where open carry is not the best option. Sure, but I tend just not to carry in those in those situations. But um, yeah, it it is you. Okay, there are some people, we know them, we've met them, or we've heard of them, well, I, I, we've met them, that get the permit, and they think it's a license to kill. And it's like, you do not represent us. Get, get your head out of your butt. This is not, you're not a cop. You're not a mercenary. This is just a piece of paper saying that you can now conceal carry under these circumstances in these places. And you're not breaking the law by having a concealed weapon. That's all it is. It is not a license to kill. It is, does not mean that you're a law enforcement reservist or anything else like that. You still have all that responsibility, if not more, now on your shoulders. I don't know if, if Sandy. No. Oh, go ahead, Sandy. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, from from what Squib had said, there are a few idiots that maybe see it that way. Um, but the worst part is everybody who's anti-gun or anti-concealed carry thinks that we all see it that way. They they all think that we think we're Batman or we think we're Paul Kersey from from Death Wish. And, you know, they're just afraid that we all carry a gun and we're all going to try and kill each other. And, and that is 100 percent not true. Yeah. And like I said, it's going to basically change, you know, your your entire attitude about things uh, when you do that. Or I would hope it would or you would think about it. It's not that you now have this thing that you can show off and brandish. And so on. the last thing we want to do is encourage anybody to do anything illegal. Um, Chad, where, let's see, where's that at? Chad V or Chad five makes a pretty good opinion. In my opinion, the right attitude is to avoid conflict at all costs and be responsible and safe. Have a good quality holstering gun belt. Most importantly, train with good defensive ammunition. Yeah, and those are some things that we had talked about earlier. Was you know being being comfortable with the gun and so on. Andrew Faulkner says uh, the first time I carried the grip got caught on the chair when I stood up and then fell to the floor. Everyone was staring at me. And then there's one I want to talk about. Screaming Skull Saloon makes a pretty good point. 
Uh, and this is something that I find myself too. Screaming Skull Saloon says, I don't care if I'm going out for dinner and I want to have a beer or a glass of fine wine. I mean, that's almost something that you need to plan ahead on because I don't know about other states, but Nebraska, I believe it's zero tolerance for alcohol on you while you're concealed carrying. So that's why I don't ever drink if I'm planning on carrying or if I know I'm going to be going out with friends, I won't, the firearm will be in a location where it can legally be transported or it's just simply not on me. So that's something too. And again, this has a huge kind of impact on, you have to make some major adjustments with life and you might make some mistakes and realize, Oh God, I probably shouldn't carry there. Oops. I shouldn't have taken that shot. You know, my gun's, behind me maybe i shouldn't have done that you know or have that alcohol or whatever and so attitude the thought process going into it and again we're not doing this to scare anybody but these are just some things to think about maybe we can help anybody or provide some good uh some good advice for people that have been uh carrying for any length of time right because i think we can always we're always lifelong learners in any kind of a situation um so attitude is important all right you want to make sure that you carry yourself professionally, that you always take the higher road, avoid conflict as much as possible. Remember that that weapon is basically a last resort to defend your 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 life or the life of a family member or loved one or anybody else that you see to protect. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where if it comes down to you using it, it's going to be up to you to defend the use of that firearm, no matter what. You know, what, no matter regardless of what the situation is, you need to be ready for the ramifications of it. And we can talk about liability and stuff like that here in a little bit. Um, the other part of it, too, is just getting comfortable with carrying. Um, I would say that a lot of times you might forget about this. There's a lot of people that buy a gun. They put 50 rounds through it, and it just it sits it sits on their bedside. Or they put 50 rounds through it, and, and that, that person carries it in their concealed carry purse. Or they just holster it, and they don't ever take it out. Um, I think you need to familiarize yourself with your firearm. You need to train with it and train often. And I know sometimes that can that can lead to some issues with some wear and tear in the firearm. But um, when I conceal carried my Sky CPX2, I basically wore it out. I ran a thousand rounds through it in a little over two years. Not a lot. I mean, I was doing a hundred rounds every couple months. You know, every time I take other guns out to the range. But I think that familiarity with the firearm is very important. You know, know how to train if you need to clear the weapon. Uh, know how the ammo fires through it. Cycle out your ammo yearly. Okay, your defensive ammo. And I think that that's. Um, that's something that maybe people don't do enough, and myself included, especially with my, my Ruger EC9S. As of late, I really haven't fired it for probably about five or six months. And uh, again, making sure that when you draw it, you run into no issues, that, that you practice draw, that you practice dry firing with it safely, obviously, uh, that you, you train with it as much as you can. Maybe even take it through a defensive handgun course. You know, see if it is, in fact, the firearm you want, or maybe you want to upscale to something a little bit larger instead of a tiny pocket gun, right? So what do you guys think about training? What, what's what's your opinion on the training aspect panel? What do you guys think? Is that something that a person should do? Or do you think that if you feel comfortable with those fir first 50 rounds, just leave it at that? What are your thoughts on that, guys? I suppose it's your background before you uh, start to conceal carry. Like, uh, let's just say you finally come to a, a situation where you said, maybe it's a good idea if I get my permit, or your state just went constitutional carry, or your state just went shall issue you decide that you're going to conceal carry. What's your background prior to this? So there are all kinds of people out there that are novices. Oh, maybe they went squirrel hunting with daddy's 22 or something like that. But they're novices. And they have no law enforcement, military, or security background at all. And those are the ones that are the loudest on YouTube going, training, 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 training. It's not just the instructors that are trying to drum up business. But it's, it's, and every time I hear that, it drives me up a wall because it's like, no, I don't know everything and I know what my shortcomings are. But my background prior to concealed carrying kind of put me in a position where I needed to know the laws more than anything else. There are people out there that don't even know yeah. how to put, yeah. put ammunition in, in the firearm, right? So, and, and yeah. those are the ones that seem to be the loudest. Well, I had to go through training and everybody needs to go through training and it's kind of like, well, what did you do before then? I never touched the gun. Okay, well, I'm not you, dude, so just take it easy. So I really think it's somebody's background, but taking additional training, if you already have training experience, whatever it is, taking additional training at a later point is not a bad idea. I had somebody I was going back and forth with uh, in the comment section in one of my videos or something, and he was explaining to me, he was from another state, and I really didn't appreciate his attitude because, you know, if you don't know Michigan laws, you don't know Michigan laws. Well, he was, 
actually listing the actual law, the numbers for the laws. And the laws had changed since I took my concealed carry permit to where now I can take my gun more places than I used to. So if I were to start concealed carrying again, I can file paperwork to, to get my permit back. I let it expire. Mm -hmm. Instead of, but it, the, the yeah. smart thing for me to do is to go and take a class so I can get these updated <laughs> laws. But if I carried under the old rules, I would still not be violating any laws. I would only be restricting myself. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to point that out. And from that standpoint, I could see if, if uh, you, you let your stuff lapse or maybe your state has had some change of laws that are less restrictive, more restrictive, whatever, it might not be a mm -hmm. bad idea to retake that class just to find out what's changed because not all states are forthcoming about... I found out that I can open carry more places in Michigan if I have a concealed carry permit than I can if I have no permit at all, because we have permitless open carry, mm, but, it's, okay, but okay. there are places you can't take it. If I had that Michigan CPL, there's a lot more places I could open carry, and it's like, wow, I never knew this. Now that that's, that's interesting, sort of, you know, yeah, it, it makes it more valuable. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I don't know. Sand Hills, do we? Nebraska's not like that at all, is it? I mean, there's some advantages to having your carry permit in terms of purchasing the firearms and stuff like that, but I don't. Um, the only discrepancy I yeah. can think of, because we also have permitless open carry. Anybody mm -hmm. who's not a person, anybody who's uh, over, uh, I guess I'd have to double check on the age. I know for sure 21, I'd have to check on 18. But for sure, anybody over 21 who's not prohibited can open carry uh, a handgun with no, no issues. In fact, you can open carry an AR-15 inside the state capitol building. We found that out last week, and it's totally <laughs> legal to do so. Even yeah, if it makes yeah. people uncomfortable, that's on them. Um, but the uh, the glaring exception to that rule is Omaha city limits. Open carry is only allowed in Omaha if you have a CHP, which is completely preposterous. But they get to make their own special rules because we don't have any legislation saying that they can't. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure there's other places that have those kinds of ordinances and stuff like that, too. So, yeah. You know, speaking of special rules, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, I, I know in some states they don't want you going into an establishment that sells uh, alcohol, you know, like, like a yeah. bar where you sit down, you know, you have a meal, you have a beer or whatnot. They don't want you in those places because you have a firearm. But here in South Carolina, we're a little different. You can go into those places. You can have a meal. You can, you know, drink anything that's not alcohol and carry a gun in, in, in that establishment. Yeah, in Nebraska, you're not supposed to conceal carry in a location that gets more than 51% or 51% or more of its revenue from alcohol sales. And if they don't put a sign up, I don't know how a person's supposed to right. know that. Because we have a lot of sports bars. How am but, I supposed to know if their revenue comes from food or drinks? Especially right, if they don't have but, a sign up for it, you know? What, what I was saying, though, it's like, like not, it, South Carolina is a little different. You can conceal carry in any bar as long as, one, they don't have a sign up saying you can't you can't carry. Okay. You can't have a fi firearm. And two, you know, you, you don't imbibe alcohol. That is the only yeah. stipulation. You yeah, go in yeah. there, you can, you can carry all you want in there, have fun with people. Just you can't drink alcohol in there. I don't so see this a is, problem with that. This is going to take me kind of, we're going to bump down my list here a little bit. Um, again, familiarity with the firearm training. Take some courses. Uh, take some firearms courses. Once you go. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, we'll get into the line in a sec. Um, once you get your, your, your permit, or if you can just, carry concealed great i do recommend that you take some some handgun courses maybe defensive pistol courses it'll get you much more comfortable with pistols in general especially if it's your first kind of step into the firearms world now if you've grown up with guns your whole life you might not benefit from it as much as somebody who has not but uh i think that training is 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 very important i know after i took two classes that i took i was much more comfortable with firearms in general even just being around the sound of gunfire um and then with carrying i mean it, it yeah i was much more comfortable even though i didn't use the same gun for those classes that I that I that I normally daily carry, uh, I still think it helped out a lot. I do recommend you take the class. I think my classes were fifty bucks a piece. Got to shoot for about three or four hours. I had a really good time. Um, the next one, yeah, the knowing your your laws. Now you might have gotten your carry permit five or six years ago, ten years ago, um, or if you're just a constitutional carry and anybody can legally open or conceal carry in our state uh, without a permit. You need to know the laws because when you go through like the Nebraska carry ordinances and laws, there's pages and pages of rules and laws and regulations that you need to know. Spend the time and go through it. 
maybe mark up any points that you don't know. Uh, know the specific laws because we have, you know, every every state's different. Um, every city could be different, like we said with with Omaha. When's the last time you've actually gone over and looked at the carry laws? Because there might be something that that's been opened up to you, like what, what Squib was mentioning earlier, or there might be some more restrictions and maybe you hadn't heard about it and didn't know about it or didn't realize you couldn't carry in this place or that place. And when Nebraska gets very interesting when it comes to where you can legally store your loaded firearm and how you can do it and what the rules and laws say about that. I don't know if Nebraska law gets a whole lot of updates, but uh, what I've read, you know, it's, it's there, there's a lot there. I mean, there's, I don't know, there's 20 or 25 pages, I think of, of, of firearms laws for Nebraska and the concealed carry parts, a small portion of that. But again, specifics, you know, about what's going to happen if you carry into a place you're not supposed to. Uh, what happens if you carry into a hospital, government building, you know, church when you're not supposed to versus a store or a business, right? So knowing the laws is, is very, very important. So spend some time and educate yourself and do that. You know, if you're going to spend hours watching YouTube gun videos, spend a couple hours and go through your laws so you know or even have a copy of them with you. So if something would ever happen, you've got specific ordinances. Because it's funny, I watch Soli Acker's channel. Uh, dude down in Florida does a lot of the open carry Florida stuff. And it's amazing how he has to tell the police which ordinance and which law it is that allows him to legally open carry on the way to his fishing spot. And some of these cops, they don't even, they, either they don't listen and don't care or didn't know. <laughs> it seems like one out of 10 encounters that that guy has on his channel with the police, it's somebody that actually knew that that guy has a right to open carry. And people don't even realize it. And he even knows the ordinance number, the specific sub whatever you want to call sub laws and sub rules. So I admire him for that. I mean, the guy knows his stuff. You definitely need to make sure that you review your carry laws and support gun tube at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Shameless plug, shameless plug. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. But anyone that signs up as a member, as a paid member on gun they're automatically sent one of these stickers out provided they give us their address. There you go. Their mailing address. And you need a copy of their concealed carry permit too, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> we're, not, we're not gonna do that. But these are, right, these, are right. these, these were provided by uh, everyone's favorite uh, uh, sticker store, AllenInker.com. So I just wanted right to on. show them off. So. Okay, it's always good to know. Always good to know. So we've talked about training. We've talked about the concealed carry mindset and attitude. Um, we'll get to insurance here in a little bit. Holsters, holsters. Here's the deal. It, when you first get into concealed carrying, it's it, it may be uncomfortable for you. It may not. It depends if you're used to wearing things on your belt. Uh, you're going to notice that little extra weight. And again, a lot of that can be mitigated with a good holster with a solid belt, whether it's a carry belt or a rigid belt or just a good solid leather belt in general, right? Um, the holster that you have, I mean, you might try out a couple different holsters. I don't know. Eventually, you're going to get to a point when that's going to depend on the person where you are finally just going to be able to conceal carry. You're going to have your holster, your weapon with you, your firearm, and you're not really going to notice it. Like, you know, you're always going to know it's there, but it's not going to be a burden. It's not going to get in the way. It's not going to it's not going to be an annoyance to you. So the whole point behind this is, is get the gun and wear it. Wear it as much as you possibly can. Wear it around the house, conceal it around the house. Um, get comfortable with it. For me, I think it took about, and I mean, I can't, and I can't daily carry at work. Unfortunately, I'm limited to evenings, weekends, vacations, breaks, and stuff like that when I'm not when I'm not doing my job. Um, I don't know. I, I would say it took me probably sixty days to get comfy. Calaveras is you showing off? Yeah, yeah go ahead, bud. Are. That's for just because I'm doing the same. I took the firearm out so you don't get a channel strike. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah. the evening. So I, you know, I threw on my holster and I have my, you know, it's sitting on the desk off to the side so you don't get a strike. But that's where, you know, uh, exactly what I'm doing is getting used to the weight of having, you know, this is an alien gear shape shift on a core essential belt. So, you know, it distributes the weight out. Uh, the belt I've only had a week. And I can tell you just in that short period of time that the uh, stiff, you know, carry belt makes a huge difference. In oh, it does. It takes the, it carries. does some weight bearing. And yeah. I'm used to carrying weight. So I've always carried, you know, I've always carried a Leatherman multi-tool and a cell phone on my belt. So I'm already used to weight, but I can tell you just from the week I've had it, a good belt makes a huge difference. So, I mean, everything you guys are saying about that, I think is, you know, valid. And I can back it up from personal experience because being a newbie to the, uh, to the good carry belts. I'll second that. 
Hey, uh, John, how long did it take you to get comfortable with, like, when you finally got that perfect holster? Was it just something within a couple of days you were good at this? Some people are chiming in saying it took about 30 days of solid wear. It depends if you're going to wear all day and stuff. What was it for you? Because you've gone through a lot of holsters just like me, man. I mean, it's taken me a while to get to one that I really like. Yeah, but I always keep coming back to the same one, uh, mm. the same, same one or two. Okay. Because um, we've, I mean, we kind of mentioned this a little bit. Um, last week or the week before too we're always looking for that holy grail of holsters right uh, um yeah even yeah. when we find one that works that doesn't mean that there might be one that's better or you know more comfortable or or has some other appeal to it so i don't think that the quest for a for a good holster ever quite ends yeah. but uh as far as getting comfortable gosh it's been a couple years ago now and i don't honestly remember um it didn't take too long once i got something set up that actually was comfortable and that's the biggest thing is um the right holster will actually you can forget that you're wearing the gun mm -hmm. if you if you find the right one mm -hmm. um but again there's a lot of stuff the honestly <clears throat> i'm gonna echo what calavera said because having uh having a a, a stiff sturdy reinforced belt um I didn't think made that big of a difference either until I went to one and it definitely makes a huge difference. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as, as tame and PG and, and not in the gutter as I can possibly do this. Um, there are some, uh, sometimes where, um, you know, as, as a dude, when you have to, uh, when you have to visit the, the little dude's room, um, you know, sometimes you don't have to unbuckle your belt to do your business, right? Yeah. Other times, depending on, honestly, for me, it depends on the pants. I've got some pants that it just doesn't work right to, to stand there and do my business unless I completely unbuckle. And I know that's probably TMI. The reason I say that is because having a stiff belt means that um everything doesn't just completely sag in the waistband yeah. you yeah. know your, your pants don't try and fall off of you mm -hmm. um even i mean i never considered that you know everybody thinks about when your belt is buckled and you're wearing it but even little things like that um you know keeping everything concealed where your t-shirt still covers everything when you're hanging out in the men's room or whatever you know it's not something you'd ever think about until you're in that position. And then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, um, having the stiff belt makes a huge difference on more, more aspects than, than just, just one. It's not just the weight distribution. It's yeah. there's a lot of stuff, but it makes a oh, huge yeah. difference having a, a reinforced belt or a, a heavy thick belt. And I used to, I used to carry on just a, a flimsy nylon belt. It wasn't reinforced and it wasn't all that stiff. And I definitely know, the difference i've kind of been to both extremes mm -hmm. so you don't have to spend a 100 bucks to get a good belt but no. sometimes that 30 dollar walmart belt it's gonna work for a while there's nothing wrong with it there's just in my opinion there's some that are better yeah same thing same thing with holsters once it gets comfortable it's real easy to get comfortable with the idea of carrying the gun the notion to me, I think, took longer to get comfortable with than the physical comfort and the just the aspect of having that weight on my hip. But you know, I grew up in a place where you know I I built on Dad's twenty two pistol and go rabbit hunt when I was a kid and stuff like that. I mean, I've built on guns before, so it's not a big yeah. deal. I grew up yeah. playing cowboys. You know, it's oh yeah, not, not that big a deal <laughs> as far as the the actual physical weight of the gun or the comfort. It's it's more just. It's more just get comfortable, get good equipment. Don't skimp on on a holster and a belt. And that doesn't mean you got to buy the most expensive ones. But if you're if you're choosing between two holsters, don't let the price be the de the determining factor. Mm -hmm. Let the other issues, the the other features of that holster make the difference for you. Because nobody nobody's ever come back and said, "Gosh, I wish I'd have bought a a cheaper holster." <laughs> But there are people that have come back and said, gosh, I wish I had spent just a little bit more money and gotten a little bit better holster. That happens all the time with people. Are gun belts the same thickness? Like, not like thickness, but like, do they fit through your everyday belt loops or do you got to buy different pants too? 
There's different. Well, there's different heights depending on who you order your belt from. Uh, you're gonna have to. They'll, they'll yeah. give you what the measurement is. I mean, that's gonna depend on the company. They may offer a two inch or one and a half inch or one and three quarters. Just like with your holsters, they're gonna offer different uh, loop sizes for your 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 hooks, clips. Kingpin, what? Right, like the chorus. I think the uh, the base core essentials because you know when I ordered mine. Uh, the majority of them were the inch and a half, I believe it was, because that is more or less your quote-unquote standard belt mm -hmm. and uh, standard belt loop, you know, size. So that's what they have as their baseline size. But when I've looked into some of the Bigfoot gun belts and some of the other ones, yeah, that's your you could, you know, uh, they would list off, it, oh, this is an inch and a half belt, this is a two-inch belt, whatever. So depending on what kind of you know, pants you wear and what size your belt loops are will mm -hmm. kind of dictate what belt size you can wear. I think also yeah, you got to remember it's... Oh, go ahead. Duke Liberty in the house. In general, oh, yeah, buddy. What's up? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, a lot of it is just discipline. You've got to remember that you you need to be disciplined in, in general when carrying um, and then making sure that, yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable for a time frame because you're getting used to it. Um, and I think kind of wading through that um, and just having that discipline overall to continually carry the same way to be safe. Mm -hmm. uh, I was checking, some, there's a few comments that were rolling in here. I wanted to get through this. Uh, Screamy Skull Saloon said, core essentials belt for me all day, every day. Uh, let's see here. If you have a good holster and gun, you won't even know it after a month. This is true. Uh, when you first start carrying, you tend to touch the gun and adjust to try to resist. Yeah, you want to just just put it on and just leave it and go about your day. Eventually, you will get used to it. Um, Screaming Skull Saloon says, I carry my gun when I mow the lawn, shovel snow, or do any yard work at home. And that's another thing. Depending on your state law, you may be allowed to conceal carry on your own property. And if that includes an acreage or your own property on your home, if you live in a neighborhood where maybe you have to worry about your personal safety once in a while, you know, consider that if you can. But again, you want to follow your, uh, your state laws. Uh, Southpaw says... Core essential belts are gray, blue alpha gear too. Tacos and French fries says, I like SOE belts. So we're calling off these brands for anybody that might want to know where to start. Let's go off of what some of our gun community uses. Uh, New York Outcast says, I've had great luck with my issued belt and my cheap 511 belt. No issues for me. Uh, what about the guys that carry it works as Mad Sexy? Mad Sexy, you're going to have to clarify that question. I know you posted that question a while ago. I don't know what you want us to mention about it. The big thing about carry at work is you're going to have to carry as comfortably as you can, especially depending if you're going to sit or work, depending on what the laws are or the rules are at the place that you work. That's going to determine a lot about what and how and if you can carry. If you get on a ladder at work and you're reaching up over your head to try to get something that's real high up and your shirt is not long enough and it becomes untucked and you expose that firearm and your employer has a no, no weapons policy, even though the state says you can bring it there, Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could endanger your job. I, I know somebody who got caught that way, and my reaction when I found out about it was, well, I'm glad somebody in here I trust was carrying a gun. <laughs> Nobody else seemed to see, see it that way, but, you know, I mean, it was, well, there were some people that, is, if it had been them, I'd been like, oh, man, they had a gun, but there's other, other people I worked with that's like, nah, I feel a lot better coming to work knowing at least they're packing heat. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Uh, let's see here. We also got Braddock holsters has some really good quality and expensive options. Core gray belt, the honeycomb looking buckle. Uh, Can we go back and, yeah. and re revisit the concept for a second? Of, sure. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't touch your gun all the time and don't constantly be fiddling with it or adjusting it mm -hmm. or otherwise calling attention to it. Um, <clears throat> two, two things. Cause first of all, that's a hundred percent true. But second of all, that goes back to equipment too. If you're using, you know, a, a ten dollar uh, flimsy nylon belt and <clears throat> a fifteen dollar Uncle Mike's, you know, one size fits most holster, that thing's gonna shift around. It's not always gonna stay in the same spot. Mm -hmm. And what is one of the most important things when you're concealed carrying is making sure that it's always in the same spot and that it doesn't shift around and that it's always going to be exactly where you need it to be and where you expect it to be if you reach for it. Mm -hmm. If you've got good enough equipment that the belt and the holster and everything stay put, then 
it's going to be there. It's fine. Don't keep adjusting it. And if you got to keep adjusting it because it's moving and shifting, then you need a new holster or a new belt or both or different pants, or you've got to go back to the drawing board and figure out a new system. Yeah. Because if it's moving on you, that that's not safe for you or me or anybody else that's around you. Um, and it's going to make you constantly have to fiddle with it. Mm-hmm. You don't have a choice but to fiddle with it. And that's going to get you busted. So and I think that if people freak out all the time, they think that everyone notices it. I'll tell you, 99% of the people don't notice anything. Hell, sometimes it's, they don't notice when you open carry. Exactly. So <laughs> That's what I was going to bring up about yourself. printing. <laughs> I've had discussions you with people who said, yourself. well, I don't think anybody should ever have a gun with them out in public. Or I don't, I'm like, you do realize that I, I've i been concealed carrying out in public every time you see me at Walmart or a restaurant. You you do realize this, right? You know, I mean, that's it's kind of funny when it because what you 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 care. I said, like, yes, I've always got a gun on me at all times, unless I go into the post office or a hospital or a government building. <laughs> Did I they go, follow I'm, that up? Did they follow that up with the the, the standard? Oh well, I trust you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. People. Oh well, you're like, a good yeah, guy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You got a gun tube on YouTube. You got a gun channel on YouTube. You know, well, what does that matter? You know what? <laughs> I'm probably more likely to misbehave because I'm around you guys than than you know. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Um, but let's let's move into printing, printing, printing. Now, there is a quick question here, and I want to address this real quick. This was by uh, Big Red says, what about people who can't afford the permit that want to protect their life? Big Red, if you can open carry and you can pull it off and they allow you to do it, that's one thing you can do. I mean, I hate to suggest, but there's always less than lethal options. You know, like little there. I've seen a few pistols out there that shoot like pepper balls and things like that tasers mace uh i've got to ask you yeah exactly how much is this permit that you can't afford it i mean mean, well or can you even or is there a chance you're not going to get it because you know talking to kingpin maryland you got to basically have some mafia connections or be god to get a carry permit in maryland right i mean don't get me wrong okay let's look at even in the state of nebraska in in some places you got to take a course here. You're going to spend for a for a good instructor's course. You're going to spend a hundred bucks to a hundred and twenty five bucks for the course, and you're going to have to buy some ammo for that. Which again, if you can't afford ammo, you shouldn't carry. But you got to buy the course. Then you got to spend a hundred bucks to get your permit. So you're looking at over two hundred bucks, or right at just to get a permit to exercise a constitutional right in the state of Nebraska. A lot of states or a lot of areas, those courses cost a lot more. So yeah. it can be cost prohibitive. Yeah, here in California, the you know, uh, in the Sacramento County area of California where I'm at, the estimate is all in by the time you get your permit, you're about four you to see, five hundred dollars in. It's not that I think you should have to pay for this. You shouldn't. There should just be national constitutional carry end of story, case closed. Mm-hmm. However, that's not the case. So my thing is if you can't afford to take the class and pay the permit and pay for the passport uh, photo and, and the whole nine yards, and whether it's uh, you know under $100 or it's $500, I got to wonder, uh, how can you afford the gun? So, you know, and then e- even if you do pay for all this, I paid 90 bucks for my concealed carry holster. I mean, they're not cheap. And no, then, the ever, you know, the, the, at some point you may decide to get rid of the $30 belt and go ahead and get the $125 belt. So, I mean, if you're talking about, I need to get it tomorrow and I don't have a penny to my name, well, no, you're not going to get anything. But if you can save up money, then I just, I, I don't, I don't understand the, the premise behind the question. I think if your average working person really wants to make it a priority and you sit down and look at how you spend every dollar, if you really would take the time to do it. I would think that a person, if they know that they have a chance to get the permit, and they, they can, you can, you can put back the money. All right. Unless you're going paycheck to paycheck, fixed income, you do not have an extra dime because if you spend that extra dime, you're not going to have food or there's something you can't provide for your kids. I would just say that a lot of people out there, they say, Oh, it's expensive. It's I'm not going to do it because it's expensive. Okay. But you pay 75 bucks a month for your cell phone and you got a $650 truck payment and you've got, you know, whatever. I'm just saying that if defending your life is a priority, you need to find a way to find the funds in order to do so. Okay. And I'm not criticizing anybody that might not have the money. Um, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. All right. I mean, I got to put money back before I buy stuff too. It's not like I just go out and buy, you know, expensive toys. Right. I'm just, you know, but if people would really 
sit down and look at how they spend their money and where their priorities are, you can make it a priority to put back $200, all right? Now, yeah, it doesn't get I you mean, the gun, but it gets you in Nebraska, it gets you the permit, right? There are people out there that scream that they don't have any money for this and don't have any money for that, and then they go take a trip and buy new guns, and it's like, oh, you didn't have any money. <laughs> Hey, well, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea to do a YouTube video about the new gun you bought, and then a week later do a YouTube video about how you need money. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> what about the person out there that's not making YouTube videos and doesn't have expensive guns and just can't afford it? We have no idea who this big red guy is. He might be as broke as a joker. He could be yeah. Donald Trump. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, come on. I just say that a lot of people, a lot of people waste a lot of money, and I'm not, I'm not ripping on him. I'm just saying if a person really sits down, I hate. I hate hearing sometimes, you know, well, I can't afford it, especially when it's people that I know that that could, but they don't make those expenses a priority. And you see what they waste their money on. You know, I mean, you see, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to, 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 to criticize anybody or put anybody down. Last thing I want to do is discourage anybody from trying to do it. But if you need to have a garage sale and sell some stuff or go on Facebook and sell some stuff that's sitting around the house or do some extra work in order to get this permit so that you can someday possibly defend your life, do it, you know, do, do those extra, go that extra mile to get the funds in order to, in order to take care of it. Cause it is not cheap. And like Calaveras, you were saying you're looking at $500 in California for one of these permits, Nebraska 200 before you buy ammo and get the firearm, which, you know, somebody could lend you, but still, you know, it is not cheap. And uh, Southpaw had a pretty good comment over there. Uh, what was it? Pricing it. It's political. It's pricing it so that it keeps it out of the hands of, of the common person, right? Politics. Let's make it so pricey the common person can't afford it. And who's to say that those prices won't go up as time goes on, right? Um, Mad Sexy says, I put my guns on layaway. There's an option. There's an option, too. Uh, and again, I, 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 you know, that's pretty much all I can say on that, but uh, I hope I'm not missing any comments here. Yes, yeah, so everybody's talking about their different requirements for their states. Go ahead, man. I just learned this weekend, if you have a Shields card and you uh, purchase $500 or more at Shields, you've got six months interest-free to pay that off. Yep. And they also so, give you, what, $50 I mean, off the first purchase? Away, yeah. Yeah, when you first sign up, when you're approved, you get like a fifty dollar mm -hmm. gift card. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, if, if you uh, if you put a five hundred dollar or more purchase, which is you know a good concealed carry gun, is going to come close to that. And if if you buy a gun and ammo and a holster, chances are you're going to be over five hundred easy. Um, you know, there you go. You've got six months interest free to pay for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I agree, man. I agree. I mean, that's, you know, that's how I bought my first AR-15 because back before Sandy Hook, there there just was not any low-cost options. And one of the least expensive AR-15s out there that I could buy at the time was like $600. Um, this is before, you know, PSA really started to take off and you had a lot of options. But um, moving on to printing, let's talk about printing for a little while. Printing can have incredible ramifications for you, especially if you live in a state or an area or a city or accounting that says if you can print and we can see it, you're considered open carrying, which is not allowed. If you live in a state where you have your concealed carry permit and there's no laws about printing, you know, printing is essentially the outline of your gun showing off on your I don't shirt, have that. right? Yeah. If, if you don't have that, then then I'm going to tell you right now, don't, don't be so conscious about printing. Don't worry about it. The majority of the people are not going to be expecting you to be carrying a firearm anyway. Um, unless you're wearing like a spandex top or something or like one of these like form-fitted athletic tops, you're going to see the outline of the gun, right? Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't put a little bit of consideration into your clothing when you do carry, uh, especially for us bigger guys that tend to layer a t-shirt underneath, hoodie or sweatshirt, or a button-up overshirt to cover my holster when I do conceal carry. Uh, you know, everybody carries differently, so how you carry is going to depend on your body type. You might be able to easily appendix carry or 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock carry your firearm, and nobody's going to notice it with just a t-shirt over your jeans, right? Everybody has a different body figure, but don't be all conscious about printing. Again, we want to we want you to keep your hands off your gun. You just want to get used to having it on you. You know, maybe check occasionally to make sure that it's where it's supposed to be, but again, a good a good belt, a good holster, that's going to minimize that movement like Sandhills had said earlier. But uh, as for printing, you just, you don't need it. It's, most people won't even expect you to be carrying, right? So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, but again, just remember, if you do carry in a place that you're not supposed to and the printing is there, it could throw a flag and you could get yourself in trouble, right? So just keep that in mind. So in terms of just daily carry, going about your daily business, yeah. printing isn't something you need to worry about. On, on that note, I have to, mm -hmm. I have to make a, 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 a point. Uh, if you go to Florida, 
they do take printing very, very seriously. They will arrest okay. you if you are printing in Florida. So be very careful while concealed carrying in Florida. Now, is that even with a carry permit? You're not allowed to, printing is not allowed? E even with a carry permit, you should, okay. you, you can't print. And I think California, what, some of the counties are the same way. Calaveras, you might need to fact check me on that one. Is California, certain counties are, am I wrong on that? Uh, my understanding is statewide. Uh, my, so my understanding is statewide. Yeah. Is uh, printing is treated the same as brandishing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, again. It just kind of depends on uh, kind of depends on the state that you're in and what the specific laws and rules say. Um, but I mean, in terms of just being self conscious about it, know that you're not printing. Okay. But I mean, in terms of worrying about somebody seeing your gun, especially if you're in a state where where printing is not an issue, don't worry about it. Just just you know, live your daily life, do what you normally do. Uh, obviously, watch where you carry, follow state laws and things like that, and then you should be fine. And okay. the last, go ahead. Okay, hold, hold up. Roland Trip says Florida backed off of that, lost in court. Okay. Well, we're not lawyers, but let's make sure that that's verified. I mean, I'm not, I'm yeah. not doubting that at all. But let's hey, make sure that's verified because it, uh, I've heard some horror stories from from uh, Michael and Sean, uh, the one of the founders of uh, Florida Carry, on the whole printing thing. I don't want to see you being handcuffed in that video, and you're like, Travis P. Levin said I can conceal. You know, I <laughs> don't trust me. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Check your um, local, local state laws or the laws of which of states you're going to be visiting. Exactly, exactly. And the the last thing I'm going to preach about, which I am guilty of because I don't have this, and I need to make this a priority, carry insurance. A lot of times your, your liability policies or your insurance policies that you have May or may not cover you if something happens with a firearm. Uh, you might be responsible for civil liability if something happens when you use your firearm, whether it's you know an accident or whatnot. Um, I would say get yourself some carriage insurance. I'm not going to recommend any one particular company because you can look in the benefits yourself and look at the cost and look at what you can afford. But you should probably have something, especially something that's going to pay the retainer to get you an attorney and something that's going to cover civil liability. So get yourself some carry insurance. I think you can get it as low as like 10 or 15 bucks a month uh, for certain low levels of coverage. You can spend 25 or 40 bucks a month, depending on what you need. But do get yourself some carry insurance, and that's going to give you some peace of mind that if something would happen, it's not an excuse to dry your gun and fire, right? But it is one of those things that if something happens and say you shoot, for whatever reason, the bullet goes through and hits the person behind them, there's a ricochet, whatever, okay, whatever it could possibly be, right? Um, you've got some insurance to back you up on that. If you're going to put all this money into the gun, the ammo, the training, the time, you might want to consider the insurance to cover the civil liability aspect of it if something would happen, right? Because again, you know, you, we've all seen the NRA, we've all seen the concealed carry videos where the guys have been arrested after a defensive shooting situation. And yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I pay $35 a month for my wife and I, and it's not, oh. me, I'm, I'm, I'm less worried about, uh, well, I'm, Okay, let's say something happens and I have to defend myself and I smoke the bad guy. Okay, so the bad guy's done. The law says that I was in the right to defend myself, but his family can come back and sue me. Yeah. No, no, that's they can't do. No, they can't. Uh, that's not what I've been told by multiple uh, attorneys. Might depend okay, on the you, state. you live here in Michigan with me. You, 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 you live in the yeah. same state as me. If you are not found guilty yeah. of committing a crime, they can't sue you civilly. Not in this state. You're sure about that, like a thousand percent? Yep. Okay. Again, the panelists that, on this right. episode are not hey. trained lawyers. <laughs> you okay, follow yeah, our I, information with your own discretion. Opinion. Yeah. No, okay. there, there are yeah, states yeah, out it's, there it's, where you could be found yeah. uh, totally innocent and, you know, they, they give you your stuff back from evidence and, you know, let you go and they expunge your record and it's all good to go. And then the dirt bag comes after you, their, their family comes after you a year later. With the blessing of the state, but if you are not found guilty of committing a crime, yeah, you can't be sure. sued civilly in the state of Michigan. That's not just with a gun. That's just uh, for committing a crime. So, yeah, civil damages are not a not an easy thing here. My understanding, is for, my understanding here, California, you can, uh, as an example of a state that I'm pretty sure we you can be sued civilly, regardless of conviction. And, uh, yeah, that's where in the whole get your stuff back, depending on what state it is, good luck getting your stuff back in uh, usable condition. 
Okay, show of hands. How many so people do... in the room have recovered their gun from evidence? Am I the only person? I've never had mine taken. <laughs> Am I the only person? I've never had my guns taken. Wow. Okay. I'll be. Well, I mean, I've never had one taken, so I can't say what happened. Squid, Squid, tell us. It came back. It came back with more ammunition than it left with. Really? Did they take it to the range? Huh? No. It makes me wonder if uh, if they were planting evidence. (laughs) So. Oh no. Yeah, Yeah. I don't know how it came back with more ammunition than it left with. So, other than that, yeah, this guy got a really cool box and some zip ties and. Holy crap, if a man! Gun goes in an evidence locker. Uh, it's getting it's getting taken to the range. Yeah, yeah that would be interesting to, get, to see what happens. I've heard horror stories about that, man. You get it back all scratched and stuff, and well, yeah, maybe in a situation like that, they'd have to do a you know they'd have to check. The, they'd have to do ballistics tests. The rounds, pull a round through it, and run a few rounds through it yeah. to check the the rifling. Yeah, ballistic, yeah, ballistic test. That's what they call that <laughs> range time. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, we're so, gonna warm it up and then we'll run it through guy, the chrono and the gel. Yeah, you know, if it's justified self-defense that they can't prosecute you for, some some cop that likes it's gonna take it to the range, to, 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 the, to the cop range, and then you know put it back in evidence. And that's how Squib got more ammo than he than it left with. That's exactly what happened. Hey guys, Mad Sexy says I dealt with a home intruder. They can see you in California and sue the crap out of you. Yeah, I think in Nebraska there's civil liability also, even if you're found innocent. Uh, that's that's another reason that why you definitely correct. want to have. Yeah, that's why you want that. Oh man. Uh, hey, there was a question here. This is something to think about. Again, carry insurance, get it. Let's just leave it at that. Big Red says, guys, what about 22 LR through 25 ACP for personal protection? Uh, I guess, I guess if I'm going to carry and I know that I'm going to have to draw this firearm and it is my life or the life of somebody else I have to protect. And I mean, just because you don't know what that assailant is going to be on when they come at you or what kind of condition they're going to be in, I would want a round that's going to be capable and, and enough training myself to be able to stop that individual, right? And I'm not saying that 22 LR can't kill, and I'm not saying 22 MAG can't kill, and 25 ACP can't kill, because they do and they have. Uh, I would want a round that's going to have some sort of terminal ballistics that's going to be able to incapacitate, because I might only get one shot. I might only get one shot off. You never know. They could be coming at you with a gun in their hand. They might draw on you. You draw on them, right? And I don't know if I'm necessarily going to want a round that's just going to just going to wound them and put them on the ground, especially if I think that my life is threatened. I don't know because of that uncertainty. And I feel my life is threatened. I would, I, I can't recommend 23 through 25, um, ACP 22 LR through 25 ACP. Not that some of these guns couldn't deliver. Right. Uh, but I, I would say in my honest opinion, I'd say start a nine millimeter and work your way up just because you might only have that one shot. And you know, you're going to have to make that count, especially if you're talking your life or your family's life. What do you guys think? I would say my suggestion that, would be to my suggestion would be to uh, stick with center fire. Now, what I you know, uh, if someone was asking for my opinion, would I suggest twenty five? Probably not. I'd probably suggest three eighty or larger. But yeah. uh, just for a liability factor, I'd say stay away from rim fire. Yeah, that's about exactly what I was gonna say. I would, I would maybe lower my minimum down to three eighty because today's three eighties are every bit as good as nine millimeters from thirty years ago, um, within reason. I mean, it depends on again what you're buying. If if you're don't skimp, don't skimp on defense ammo. Um, but uh, again, as I've always said, if uh, if I've got a choice between shooting at somebody with a uh with a 22 versus you know picking up a a rock or a pointy stick then i would like to have that 22 but it's definitely not a deal i only know one person who purposely uh uses 22 long rifle for self-defense the primary reason is cost the secondary reason is recoil i don't recommend it but it like travis said you know it, it it'll kill or Sometimes it's just 
the uh, attacker seeing the gun, that's enough to get them to stop, but you can't count on that. You just can't. So, I mean, if that's, if that's all you're going to use, that's your preference, and that's all you're going to use. Every single person I've seen shot with a twenty two has lived and continued through the fight. So that's my concern. So that's my two cents on that. Yeah, one. I, I would not recommend it, but if you've got somebody that's more stubborn than you, <laughs> it's so hard to change their mind. Here's what Big Red has to say, and he's got some valid points here. The nine millimeter scared me bad because I had a terrible car accident. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, Big Red. 22 Magnum is a pretty loud round. 22 LR can be a very loud round also. You might not get the blast and the recoil and the concussion that a 9mm or larger round is going to produce. And I see where you're coming from. I was thinking maybe you were talking about a cost perspective because you can get a lot of these entry level like a Jimenez or whatever, you know, guns for $100, right, in there. And you can, you know, 22 or 25 ACP, Phoenix Arms and stuff like that. Um, but do, do keep in mind, if you need to get in on self-defense on the cheap, Try to score yourself, say, a used high point for under $100. Or if you can do 175 look at maybe getting like a Ruger EC9S or Taurus G2C. Um, I mean, there's a lot of oh, sub-$200 handguns we can recommend. But uh, just, yeah, if we're talking cost, you don't have to resort to a, a 22 or a 25 ACP, right? You've got a lot of options, especially if you don't mind going used new. You can get a lot of those high points for $149 just to have something, right? Not necessarily concealed carry gun, but go ahead, John. Well, it also depends too on um, you know is it is it muzzle blast is it recoil um, mm -hmm. you know that that kind of rules out nine millimeter for certain people because nine millimeter isn't ruled out for Mrs. Sandhills but when it comes to certain sized handguns nine millimeter is ruled out mm -hmm. we found that out when we went and and uh, rented the the new Smith and Wesson nine millimeter EZ. It uh, it's a smaller gun and it's got a very you know very rough snappy recoil impulse just like just like the regular Gen One shield that I I have for concealed carry and uh, it, it it shoots the same it recoils the same it's snappy and you got to know what you're doing in order to to uh, you know be able to to deal with it you got to know a little bit about how to shoot smaller guns nine millimeter is great in her full size Walther PPQ not great in a shield but uh the 380 in that 380z she liked that she had fun shooting that gun so it just depends too on what what we're talking about maybe maybe nine millimeters fine but it takes a bigger gun because then the recoil isn't as noticeable um with a heavier gun heavier slide so that yeah. makes a huge difference too you you gotta you've gotta know for sure exactly what it is that you don't like about it and once we know what it is that, that rules it out, then we'll know we, – we don't know how to overcome what we don't know we're overcoming. we got to know what we're dealing with before we know how to fix it, right? we got to yeah. diagnose the problem first, and then we'll fix it. Billy the cab driver says, I still say that 44 Special is largely ignored and possibly headed towards obscurity by CCW carriers. It's very well suited for defense and revolver. Enter the Charter Bulldog. Now, Big Red does go on. He does kind of give us some more information. Um, the recoil is just like an explosive going off in your hand. Now, Big Red, you say, I do have a Phoenix Arms 25 and a Taurus TX-22. Next will be a Sky Red Dot. Big Red, I'm going to tell you right now, the Sky handguns, if you have one, if people have them, you shoot them, great. I own one for three years. They are very uncomfortable to shoot. You're going to feel the recoil a lot more than you would on, on a little bit larger pistol, so keep that in mind, especially if you don't like that pop or that feel or that jolt. That's a small gun. I think you're going to probably notice it more than you would through, say, uh, a Glock 17 or a Glock 19 or just whatever, you know. Um, so just hey, keep uh, that in mind. Okay? Yeah, yeah. No. Sorry, guys. I got to bail. It's all good, buddy. Yeah. I, okay. You know, appreciate With regard to the 44 Special, I agree. I think it is a good self-defense round. It has a, lot of, has a lot of potential. You can either... Have it loaded light, or you can have it loaded really hot, almost equivalent to or equivalent to a 44 Magnum. So you can train with it and not put a lot of wear and tear on yourself. And then you can you can carry something a little bit hotter than what you train with if you want, or carry the same thing. Uh, the thing about that is, if anybody's concerned that 44 Special self defense loads won't be available in the future because they're not as popular, just get into reloading. 
You can reload 44 Special and 44 Magnum on the cheap. It is my favorite. Both of those calibers are my favorite to reload. 44 mag is an expensive round to go buy in the store. It's like $30, $35 a box. I mean, if you ever got to go buy 44 Magnum, dude, it's, it's yeah, pricey. I've never man. actually worked up the math to figure out exactly what it is, but I, I'm telling you, I can, I can, I can load up, I can make yeah. up a couple hundred rounds for target shooting and not even bat an eye. I mean, I do buy some of my stuff somewhat in bulk, not, I'm not everything, not yeah. all the time, but special in Magnum use the same, same dies. Mm -hmm. uh, they use a different crimp die, but other than that, they use the same dies. It's the same bullet. Uh, are, they are different primers, uh, but uh, you, I, I believe you could put the Magnum primer in the special. Now I got to think about it, but it doesn't matter any, anyhow. It's all that stuff. The the powder you can use the same powder in in both cartridges. So if if you want something for self defense or for hunting, there are a lot of different bullets out there that are available. And if, if you've been trying to come up with a reason to get into reloading, if you like 44 Special, but it, you just... And, and what's weird is 44 Special costs more than Magnum. It's really weird. And, but you want that, and you want, you want uh. availability, and you want a variety, just get into reloading. There you go. Uh, anything else you guys want to mention about concealed carry in general, the concealed carry life or carry concealed life? Anything that uh, people should know that we didn't really touch on or didn't discuss? Because I'll move on to the second part of the show if, uh, if you guys have any ideas. Yeah. One more thing. Um, yeah. If your state has a requirement that you notify law enforcement, if you come into contact with law enforcement, you know, like you get pulled over for a traffic ticket or something like mm -hmm. that, make sure you know if your state requires you to notify them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the, whether or not you have to notify the officer when you get pulled over. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, most places call that duty to inform. Mm-hmm. If you're look if you're looking yep. on a website or something at a specific state's uh, laws, duty to inform is normally how they word that. That means that if you get pulled over and you have any interaction with law enforcement or emergency personnel, that you gotta let them know. Some states, Nebraska is one of them. You're required. Um, I would take that one step further. You gotta know what it is for your state, but if you travel, you gotta know what it is for every state you travel through. And if you travel through a duty to inform state like Nebraska, you darn well better know that so that you're not breaking any laws that way either. Because the last thing that you want is to get pulled over for speeding and, you know, give the, the patrol person your, your driver's license and they go back to their car. Then they come up with their gun drawn and want to know why you didn't tell them that you've got a concealed carry permit because you've already broken a law now. Yeah, yeah, and for somebody and who's new to concealed carry and says, what's the big deal? Just tell them every time. Some people who live in states or who travel through states where they don't require you, it's, you're not breaking the law by not informing them. Some people believe that if they don't tell them, they're just going to write them their ticket and send them on their way. But if you tell them, the cop is going to freak out. In some cases, the cop is freaked out. Not because you, you broke the law, but because they knew you had a gun. You say the word gun, they lose their minds. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is, you know, yeah, if you if you want to err on the side of caution and 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 inform, no matter where you go, that's a, that's a risk you take. Is this is this isn't a you know you should do this or do don't do this or don't. It's 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 personal preference. But if you if you're required to by law and you don't, now you have just committed a crime, like what Sandhill said. So that's why some people might uh, not understand why uh, if you're traveling, you're, you're going to need to know this, or or mm -hmm. why wouldn't somebody not? They, they just want to get their ticket and go. They don't want to get read the riot actor. Some of these guys are really cool. They're pro 2A. They don't panic. I had a cop once when I let her know I had a rifle in the back of the truck. She said, that's nice, and just you know went on her way. And, and I was kind of <laughs> upset because I really wanted to show off the rifle. I was kind of hoping she'd want to see it. So aren't you and, curious yeah. about this firearm? No. Yeah, okay. No, no, not even. And it's like, oh, man, that's really nice, though. But, but that's the whole thing. Some of them don't, they're, they're calm. They're, you know, the whole, I, you won't see my gun if I don't see yours and all that. And then you've got the one that is just, they're on edge. And, and some people just don't want to make that worse. They just want to get their speeding ticket and go. So mm -hmm. that, that's why some people in, in a state where you don't have a duty might not mm -hmm. inform. What mm -hmm. you do is up to you. Exactly. 
All right, guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch topics now because I want to get this uh, this discussion out there. Real quick, I just want to mention this. I will be doing my Patreon drawing for the month. This week at some point, I'll just go live, and uh, we will be pulling one of the little uh, soldiers out of the Army box. Remember, if you if you support me on Patreon, you get your your soldier dropped in the uh, in the box, and I, I pull out a different soldier every month. And then if your name's on that soldier, you're going to be the winner. So we got a lot of cool gifts we're going to give away. I want to get that out before I forget as a reminder for myself because February is almost over, and I don't think I've done the drawing yet. And so that's something you, to keep in mind. Yeah. Can you double-check and make sure that there's one with my name in there because you, you know pull it out. So <laughs> What's funny about this is I audit the soldiers every single week. I bring up the list. And I spend like 20 minutes, and I need to print it off and just check it off. But I do check and make sure that that soldier matches the person that's on there. Because I, I do lose a couple patrons every month, and I gain a couple patrons every month. I've only got like 41 or 42. So you get pretty good odds of winning. And, uh, yeah, I'll make sure that you're I mean, in there. Yeah, yeah. You actually line them up in formation and do roll call and, and find out who's missing. No, I just take and... them and look and see their name, and then I go to the next one and go to the next one and just set them in front of me so I have them all right here. I should start doing that, though. I should, I should be doing yeah, that live before there, I do the drawing. To, yeah, they're supposed to yell back yes, sir, or here, or something like that, you know? <laughs> do you, do yeah. you play Reveille yeah, yeah, in the morning before like, you? Do I do what? They all sound like Gunny or me. It is, they all they all have Gunny Ermy's voice, like the, yeah. the toy soldier from from uh, Toy Story, and they're all like, "Sir, yes, sir, sir, present, sir." Is that a jelly donut? Your foot locker. <laughs> <laughs> Private pile. Private pile. Jerry, that's <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Yep, yep, wow. yep. Sorry, we're just having fun here. Yeah, I got to keep a PG. Got to keep a PG, which means uh, pretty gangsta, right? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, so let's move on. Let's talk about the next topic here. This was something that actually came up. A week or two ago, when we were talking about the five seven round, somebody said, "Hey, what about twenty two horned?" And I got to be honest with you, I really haven't uh, looked into the history of this round. I've heard of it, I've never fired it, never owned a firearm chambered in twenty two horned. But twenty two horned is an interesting uh, little caliber. So I'm going to give you just a quick brief history on it that should be fairly quick, and uh, we'll look at what firearms are available out there. If there are any firearms available out there for uh, twenty two Hornet, so let me just go ahead and tell you a little bit about it real quick. Uh, 22 Hornet, which is 5.6 by 35 millimeter R, is a varminting, small game hunting, survival, and competition center fire rifle cartridge, uh, commercially introduced in 1930. That's right, center fire, guys. It is considerably more powerful than the rimfire, rimfire 22 Magnum and the 17 HMR, achieving higher velocity with a bullet twice the weight of 17 HMR. Uh, the Hornet also differs very significantly from these in that being a center-fired cartridge makes it hand-loadable and reloadable, and thus more versatile, Squib. Um, it was the smallest commercially available 22 caliber center-fired cartridge until the introduction of the FN 57 by 28 millimeter. Uh, so prior to development of the modern 22 Hornet, there was a conceptually similar but physically different cartridge by the same name invented in the 1890s by Reuben Hardwood, sometimes called the 22 Hardwood Hornet. To avoid confusion, as the two rounds are not compatible. So when we start talking about the 22 Hornet, we're not talking about that uh, that or that older round. And it said Harwood's cartridge is formed by necking down 2520 single shot brass to 22 caliber, and was initially loaded with black powder. The modern 22 Hornet's ancestry is generally attributed to experiments done in the 1920s using the black powder 22 WCF at Springfield Armory. Winchester adopted what had been. Uh, a Wildcat cartridge in 1930 producing ammo for a cartridge for which no commercially made guns yet had been built. So it was not until 1932 that any company began selling commercially made guns for the 22 Hornet. And then there's some different uh, some different variances of it. Performance of it. Factory ammunition is widely available from all major manufacturers with bullets weighing from 35, 45, 46 grains and so on uh, with bullets invariably either hollow point or soft point. Muzzle velocity is typically 2,500 to 3,100 feet per second, so it's a screamer. Muzzle energy is just over 700 foot-pounds for factory ammo fired from a rifle. Um, velocities and energies are less when Hornet ammunition is fired from short-barreled firearms, pistols, and so on. And what else we need to know here? This is something kind of interesting about it. Here's the last thing I want to mention about the 22 Hornet before we look at some of the firearms. Um, Beginning during World War II, air crew survival rifles and 22 Hornet were developed and issued by the U.S. military. They were a bolt-action rifle with an adjustable stock or a break-action rifle shotgun over-under or a takedown bolt-action rifle. 
Uh, military survival issue 22 Hornet ammunition was loaded with soft point expanding jacketed bullets, not complying with the Hague Convention. The United States was the only exception to a complete prohibition of the use of expanding bullets in war due to its ambiguous policy. However, the cartridge boxes were labeled under no circumstances, and the boxes actually say this, under no circumstances is the ammunition to be used for offensive or defensive measures against enemy personnel. This ammunition is provided for use with your emergency survival rifle for the killing of game four food under emergency survival conditions only. So that's kind of an interesting little aspect of the 22 Hornet round. It is popular in competition. Uh, some states and countries do allow it for harvesting deer, but in general, it's not necessarily accepted as a deer hunting round. It's kind of a smaller game, mountain birds kind of round, turkey, javelina, coyote, wild pigs, goats, is what it says here on Wikipedia. Um, so anyway, as for actual firearms that are out there, there's a series of pistols that are out there, may not be in production anymore, but like there's a Taurus Model 22H that's out there. Uh, says here that as of 2007, Ruger's got some firearms chambered for New England Firearms, CZ, and other mass market manufacturers. And what I have on standby is just uh, some some different rifles that I found that were for sale. I couldn't find any handguns chambered in 22 Hornet, just new on Bud's Gun Shop or also over on uh, Gallery of Guns. But uh, 22 Hornet, I have no experience with 22 Hornet whatsoever. But after reading about this, it is an interesting round. Now, why didn't it take off more? I think we mentioned this last week after we were having the FN 5.7 discussion. The fact that it's a rimmed round could cause some feeding reliability if you go anything beyond, say, a single stack mag or go beyond a certain length of, of magazine. Uh, do you guys have any experience at all with 22 Hornet? I've never fired it before. I've, I've never tried it. Recoil, I guess, is very minimal. Do you guys have any experience with that at all? Yeah, uh, I, I, my father-in-law, uh, until I had met my wife and uh, started hunting with her family, <clears throat> yeah. never experienced that round. Swear by it, great round for coyotes in the thumb of Michigan. Um, really fun round to shoot, inexpensive, and I think a really good round overall of high velocity really does well. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I was going to look up uh, prices real quick. Anybody else want to comment on it at all? Any experience with it? Well, have you ever reloaded that at all, being it is a center fire round? Do you have any experience with that at all? Let me get to me. It, it, no. yeah. it takes about a year. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. no, it's, no, no it's, it, yeah. it's a no. I have no. I've never shot it. I've never handled it. I keep some some calibers that I don't own, and I don't even have that in my miscellaneous box. Okay. Well, I'm looking at ammo prices right now over on Ammo Seek. Uh, there is no lack of ammo out there. I'm looking at at least five pages of ammo. The least expensive I can find right now is uh, PPU makes it 500 rounds of 22 Hornet, 45 grain soft point, uh, $169 at 33.9 cents a round. So it is a nice alternative to the 5.7 round. Uh, if you're kind of curious about it, it's a lot cheaper if you want to buy it. Um, what about 20 cents less per round for a comparable 45 grain round? Uh, SG, who else makes it here? SG Ammo, Ammo Empire makes it, Foundry Outdoors. Okay, there's Cellier and Below that's out there. There's PPU, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, Hornady does make a VMAX round for it also. So there's quite a few ammunition. There's quite a different types of rounds and, and, and grain weights that you can go with and different types of bullets you can choose. So, yeah, 33.9 cents a round, $169 for 500 rounds. You know, you're going to pay a little bit of a premium, say maybe even over 22 mag, but if you want something that's a viable hunting round, yeah, might be something to consider. Uh, firearms, though, actually looking at firearms themselves, I'm checking out over on uh, Bud's Gun Shop right now. I'm seeing... Nine firearms total that they carry that are chambered in 22 Hornet. Now, if you want to get into it, you can get yourself a CZ 527. It's around $650. I would recommend that. That's a very sweet rifle. I would love to get one in 762 by 39, but they make that CZ 527 in, in a lot of different calibers. Um, there's also the Savage uh, 22 Hornet WV, which is like Walking Varmeter, I think is what that what that series is called. That's uh, 477 after rebate, which is probably your least expensive way to get into 22 Hornet unless you buy yourself, say, an older firearm. Savage does make a 12-gauge uh, 22 Hornet combo gun, which is pretty cool. It's got a hammer on the back that you can cock. That might be kind of a fun one. CZ's got kind of a Manlicker-style stock 
that you can go with. Ruger has the 7226, 7722 Hornet, the 18 inch barrel. New England Firearms does make the. Oh, actually, the New England Firearms model is probably going to be the least expensive if you can find one. They make a break action single shot handy rifle uh, with the synthetic stock that's chambered in 22 Hornet also. Uh, Ruger has a couple rifles for it also. So there are some options out there. You might have to hunt around a little bit to find the firearms, maybe check the gun shows. And that's pretty common of a lot of places I was finding online. It's either sold out or not available. So it can be a little expensive to get into. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Any any thoughts on 22 Hornet at all? I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I have nothing against it, but I would almost rather go 223 just because it's going to have, you know, better performance and you're going to have a lot more availability of firearms and options, but I don't know. Any thoughts on 22 Hornet guys? Okay. We'll take that as a I no. It's an old school yeah. round. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's yeah. an old school round um, that I think it, it's, it's, I think it's a generational thing to be honest with you um, that a lot of what I see is older shooters, older hunters use, where I believe you're my generation is going to go more of the two, two, three, five, five, yeah. six route plainly, maybe because of the base off the AR platform, I've hunted the coyotes with the AR before um, and done just as well with the, with the uh, uh, 22 Hornet. So it's all odd based on, I think a generational issue, but mm -hmm. it could be either way. It's a fun round though. Don't, don't not get into it. Could be, yeah. I, I, it's our, it's not archaic. It's fun. So give it a shot if you can. But man, I think you're right. I would I would agree with you. Two two three is probably where I'd stand. Yeah, yeah. I know it's kind of a neat one. Somebody had asked us, you know, hey, what do you guys think about that? What are your thoughts on it? And well, that's kind of what I think about it. You can get into it, and it's not. And I said, if you look around, you can probably get into it on on a lower cost rifle. You don't have to drop six or seven hundred on it. Uh, I would say if you check some gun shows, you might be able to find some good deals on some older firearms. There's probably something out there too that uh, that's going to work for you also. So. All right. Well, guys, before we wrap it up here, does anybody have anything uh, final they want to add from the panel? Anything you guys want to mention or anything we need to get out there? Am I forgetting anything at all? Some kind of a mad rush to get started this evening, so I hope we didn't, didn't gloss over anything. We're okay? Yeah. All right. So I think we'll go ahead and call it. Let's get ready for uh, for the Never Enough Ammo Guns and Geeks podcast, which kicks off in 30 minutes. And a lot of us on this panel are over on that show. So I think we'll go ahead and call for this evening. First, I want to thank the panel for being here this evening. And uh, then we'll give a little shout out to people that have been watching this evening. There's a lot of you out there. So thanks for chiming in and listening. Uh, let's see. Here. Let's go and start off with Night Strike. Night Strike, thanks for being here tonight, man. Anything you want to say before we go? Uh, yes, uh, shall not be infringed. Check out guntube.org, check out patreon.com slash guntube, and check out hit or miss tomorrow night, nine o'clock Eastern, eight o'clock Central, with my my unofficial co host, Travis P11, right here. Man, I do what I can. I do what I can. We got to talk about it next Tuesday, though, because I got that thing coming up that comes up every year. When I got to be gone on Tuesday night, that once a year I got to go to that. You remember that thing? But but but, but tomorrow, tomorrow you're good. I'm good tomorrow. I'm here tomorrow. Okay. But next Tuesday that, could be. That's uh, all I care about right now. I'm, all, I'm Oh no 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 no! But, yeah, but, but next Tuesday, mark your calendar. I might I might be joining because I got that thing well, I got to do every year. So well, well well then we may have to we we may have to dock your pay. That's gonna be like the fourth time I've had to do this to you, and, and, and I, I'm just kind of letting I don't want to let people know what it is. It's well, just kinda, it has nothing to do with anything embarrassing, but it's that thing I gotta do. Maybe we can get uh, maybe we can get uh, Sand Hills to fill in for you. Hey, there we go, there we go. I usually get back like right when we start. Yeah. It depends on what time I can get out there to do that thing I got to do. So <laughs> anyway, Sand Hills, Sand Hills, you think you can fill in for for Travis? Uh, you know, next week. Can, can you buy me thirty minutes? I mean, we kind of look like cousins or something. I'm sure it would work. I'll go send my I'll send my hat to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you can you send me that Wayne State hat and, and I'll just be you for a while. I don't know what happened to it. I lost it. I lost what? I, I gotta get another one. I don't know what happened to that hat. I, I put it down somewhere and I don't know if I lost it at the range, if it fell out of my vehicle. I gotta get another one. It's hard to find a camouflage Wayne State hat, man. They're just not they just don't grow on trees. You know, yeah, I bought them like eight I, years ago. I don't know anybody who wears anything from Wayne State University but that's in camo. <laughs> Well, I mean, Wayne State's kind of up in the sticks. I mean, it's not a surprise. No, it's, it's not. Literally it's in, in the downtown middle. Detroit. What? Wayne There's State a Wayne University, State in Detroit? Detroit, Michigan. Oh, no, no. This it's is a, up it's a pretty in big uh, college. Yeah. Oh, my God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on now. This is Wayne State College. Yes. It's not oh, you're just a college. Just... You're not a university. Ah. Sorry. Sorry. I... 
we're not going to argue that. We're not going to argue that. Let's not get into an. Edu- I'm not going to get into an educational argument with you right now. We'll never get done. We'll never get done. <laughs> located in Wayne, America, according to the Water Tower. Mm-hmm. That this what they just declare themselves a sovereign city, like their own independent city, or what? Is that is that what Something, they did? I don't know. But if, Wayne, if you America. Look at the water tower, it says Wayne, America. Really? I've never noticed that. And yep. I've been there about, yeah, about a dozen did. times. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. Did they forget that they're in Nebraska? I mean, they could. They're basically surrounded by cornfields up on top of a hill. I mean, you wouldn't know unless you kind of children of the corn run into it, you know. <laughs> so anyway, okay, moving on. Sandhills, yeah, give us give us your final plug, Sandhills. What do you guys say, bud? Uh, go uh, like my page on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and if you want to uh, kick in any money, you can go to Patreon. But uh, – uh, I always tell people that I'm not asking you to, but you know what? Then I do ask you to, so you can go check that out. But uh, uh, tomorrow night, we're going to talk about socialism. So uh, it, it could get lively. We'll see what happens. There you go. There you go. Awesome, awesome. It'll be on It'll be on after hit or miss at the real 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Central time. Center, middle. Everything rotates around us, including including the Earth, right? The solar system. Well, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Uh, real quick here, Vanessa Kitty, use as many calibers as you can handle. That is awesome. That is the wisdom of the evening right there. That's all I got to say. That's what it should be, man. Like, Get out there, experience it. Get out there, go to the range, have some fun, right? Carry, carry concealed. Uh, Kingpin, any final words of wisdom before we go, bro? Yeah, uh, don't neglect your freedom if you live in a free state. And <sighs> If you enjoyed this argument about carrying and belts and all that other kind of stuff, and you live in a state where you can do that stuff, appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Right on, man. Exactly. All right. Squib load. Any final words before we go, man? No, just thanks for the invite. Talk to you all later. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Uh, Duke Liberty, anything you want to say before you go? And you were not blacklisted. You just didn't pop up on my little list of auto names, and I, I'm trying to remember. I even invited a couple people tonight that asked last week to be on the show, and uh, I didn't get you on the list. Just shoot me an email earlier so I don't forget, and you should start popping up on my, my contact list automatically through Google. But No, thanks, brother. Thanks. I appreciate it. just want to be blacklisted. But, yeah, thanks for the <laughs> invite. Check out the Duke Liberty channel. And uh, have a great night. As always, thanks for uh, letting me be on the panel with all these uh, outstanding gentlemen. So thanks. Cool, cool. Sounds good. I did see somebody put up a little comment up here earlier. They said, hey, uh, SKS versus uh, AK-47. That might make for a fun little discussion. Oof, I don't know. That might be a fun little. I, I don't know what what, what our topic's going to be for next week. We'll have to kind of. Guys, if you ever want to make uh, suggestions for topics, just email me at uh, thatcalibercorner at gmail. Or, I'm sorry, thecalibercorner at gmail.com. And uh, if we got any topics, I mean, I'll definitely discuss it and bring it up, and we'll we'll see what's going on. So, okay, so let's see who is joining us this evening. We had a big crowd out there tonight, which is always good to see. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it and sticking with us for over 100 episodes. Like I said real quick, uh, we will definitely get that Patreon drawing out this week. And if I happen to hit 25,000 subscribers, if we get that to happen, uh, we're going to have a really cool giveaway. I'm already starting to think of what to do, and I need to uh, talk to uh, Stand Up at SS Pond about that. Uh, Because I might be going through him for this one. So, all right. Don't worry, Stan. It's going to be a good one. All right. So, join us this evening. We got Marco Dunn. We got Ohio 45 ACP in the house. Sam of Anarchy's out there, too. Uh, Kingpin out there and over here. M. Gabriel's out there. Vanessa Kitty, very active tonight. AC97, SS Pond, Tacos and French Fries, Guy That Comments, Midnight Range TM. Uh, who else was out there? 10X Shooters was out there, too. 10X, we need to get you on my show, man. You need to join us. How about the 22 TCM? Hey, we can do that. We can do a caliber spotlight on 22 TCM. It's a very interesting little round. DM Foz was out there. Night Strike was out there and over here. Mad Sexy out there and over here. Screaming Skull Saloon providing lots of cool, kind of thought-provoking points for the evening. I do appreciate that, man. Good stuff, good stuff. Tara Smith was out there and over here. And I hope I didn't miss anybody. Uh, Rolling Trips out there. Solar Yacker in the house. So I mentioned you tonight, man. What's up, Travis T? He says, not much, buddy. Billy the Cab Driver, Big Red in the house. Joining us this evening, New York Outcast. And Southpaw's out there too. Chad V or Chad the Fifth or Chad Five. I apologize if I'm messing that up, bud. Bill O'Donnell's out there also. Uh, I don't know. I think that's that's probably about it. 
Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, this has been Caliber Corner episode number 124. I apologize if I missed anybody that joined in on the panel. Yoner Texas was out there. Rich White was out there. Rich White in the house. Hey, man, I appreciate you listening. Thanks a lot, buddy. Um, otherwise, this has been episode number 124, where we talked about the carry concealed life and how carrying concealed does, in fact, change your life. Um, in the meantime, guys, I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. Y'all take care and have a good one. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Shut up, the infringed. <laughs> Get off my lawn, Felicia. Despedonia. Felicia, Adios, shut Felicia. up, infringed. Adios, Felicia. Felicia, she'll never, she'll never be infringed. All right, see you guys.